you, preacher, why you need all them boats. I'll tell you why, because I can't remember all this stuff. I'm going to commentate it tonight. All right? I'll, uh, I'll have someone there. I'll still forget to say I'll have some of them down. Hey, Amen. I'm going to start reading out verse 1. Isaiah chapter 44. Here's what God had to say. He said, Yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. Thus saith the Lord that made thee and formed thee from the womb, that which will help thee. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and thou Jerusalem, which means Jerusalem or Israel, whom I have chosen. Here's what I want to preach to you from. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty. Uh oh, I lost page one. God. Have to get that Amen. I will pour out water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour out my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thine offspring. Thank you. And they shall spring up as among the grass as willows by the water. Here's what I want to preach on to you today, if God will help me. I want to preach on a thirsty people, a barren land, and a bountiful God. A thirsty people, a barren land, and a bountiful God. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you what I believe. I believe that America and people in America are thirsty for God. We are beyond a shadow of a doubt the most blessed nation in this world. I'm going to tell you the poorest person in this congregation today, the poorest one of you here is richer than about 98 or 99 percent of the world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We are blessed. We have had more of the blessings of God than probably any people that ever lived. But our problem is, is that things will not satisfy. There is something inside of the heart of the man that cries out for God. The Bible says that deep calleth unto me. There's something that God put in you the day you were born. And that is a cry for God. Many of you have tried to live your life without God. Many of you tried to ignore God. But I'm going to tell you, you can't ignore God. Amen. You may live without God, but you're never going to be what God wants you to be. And you're never going to know the peace and the joy that you would know if you would turn your life to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I, I, one of the things that, again, we, it is what it is, and we can't ignore it. Like the elephant in the room. Brother, this COVID thing, this, this virus has got people praying. They're praying in front of the hospitals. They're praying on the streets of Puerto Rico. They're praying in the streets of Brazil. There are folks that are tuning in to preaching. They're, that are being stirred. You know why? Because when the trouble comes and they realize the frailty of man, there's something inside that says there's something greater than me. There's a God that's greater than me, and I need that God. Oh, hallelujah. And there's a cry inside of you that cries out for God. Woo. Oh, how glory. You may try to drown it out with drink. You may try to drown it out with drugs. Amen. You may try to smoke it out with cigarettes. You may try all kinds of pleasures and sin. But my friend, when it's all over, in the middle of the night, some of you in this building have been laying right here in this congregation, have been laying on your beds with tears in your eyes because you know you need God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Woo. <laughs> Oh, God. Oh, God. oh, the writer said, I'm going to pour water upon him that is thirsty. You read in the book of St. John, chapter 4, you read about the woman of Samaria. And she came to the well. She came at noontime. You know why? Because she was such a woman of ill repute that she could not come when the other women came. And so she came at noontime. Oh, listen. But the truth of the matter was, although she was a woman of ill repute, and that she was a harlot, 
my God, listen, her life was upside down. And she'd come with a little bucket, a little a pot to draw some water. She knew a little bit about that well. She knew a little bit about religion. But brother, there was something inside of her that was thirsty. She came to that well because she's thirsty. She was thirsty. You hear this thing today, this afternoon, because you're thirsty. There's something inside of you that what you're doing will not satisfy. There's a cry for the living God in the depth of your soul. And God said, I will pour out the water on the thirsty. Hallelujah. and all the junk and all the rock and roll stuff. And of course, uh, at that time, it was supposed to marijuana. There was LSD and other things. We didn't have the opioid crisis. But I remember friends of mine, maybe who went astray. One, one friend of mine lived right up the road, died of an overdose of cocaine at about 19 years old. Oh, God. And I saw lives, they've been wrecked and ruined by sin. But I want to tell you, there was something in the heart of this young boy that said, I've got to have God. You can have your drugs. You can have your parties. Hey, man, you can have it all. There's something inside of me that money won't satisfy. There's something inside of me that wealth and all and pleasures will not satisfy. I've got to have a touch of the master's hand. And I got touched one day by the hand of the Son of God. Brother Marty Cogan standing right here by this white car. Hey man, was drank a, a fifth of what was it? A, well, scotch. Every day that he lived, he drank a fifth of scotch. But one day, the grace of God came to him. Woo! Hallelujah! <laughs> and he found a fountain that satisfied his thirsty soul. Oh, hallelujah. Listen to me, this woman was thirsty and she needed water. All she had was an empty pot. All she had was a bad reputation. She had already tried to find peace and satisfaction in the presence of sin. She had already tried that. Amen. Amen. She had been through five marriages with five different men and was shacked up with number six. Are you still here? Amen. She didn't know God. And like Nicodemus of the New Testament, she was religious, but she was lost. She knew just enough about that well. Amen. About Jacob. But that's all she knew. She didn't know God. She didn't know faith. She didn't know the water. She didn't know life. She came with a little pot to try to get some water. God said, I've got more than that for you, honey, child. I've got water. I've got rivers. I've got the deliverance. I've got the power of the Holy Ghost. And that's what we need in this church. That's what we need in this congregation. We need revival of the old time power of God and the Holy Ghost to stir America in this congregation one more time. Listen to me. She was lost. She was a wreck of sin, but she was thirsty. Woo! I don't care where you are. I don't care what you've been through. I don't care what your present is. I don't care what your past is. I will tell you, God's got a future for you. Woo! I like what one fellow said. He said, when the devil reminds you of your past, remind him of his future. I said, when the devil reminds you of your past, remind him of his future. My God, you've been saved. You've been delivered. You've been set free. You've been washed. You've been changed. My God, you're a child of God. If you've been to the fountain that flows with the blood of the Son of God. Woo! Hallelujah. Ah, listen to this preacher. I want to tell you, America is thirsty for God. Uh, listen. I mentioned before, there more, there's been more Bibles sold in the last few weeks than ever, all time. More people listening to some kind of preaching on some kind of media. We've got every kind you can think of. I can't even name them all. People are listening to preachers say, well, preacher, what good is that going to do them all? I can tell you, he said, said my word, will not return unto me, boy. Yeah. Yeah. I had a friend of mine, oh, I can't think of his name now, he was a, he uh, did a college uh, uh, Giles, Giles, Jim, Jim, uh, Jim Giles. He was uh, uh, Gillis. Gillis, thank you. 
Jim Gillis. Sorry about that. They used to call him Giles. Jim Gillis. He was at a Van Halen concert, and Van Halen said, even God couldn't save anybody in this concert. And right there in the middle of that concert, Jim Gillis fell down on his knees. The conviction of God hit him, and he fell down on his knees and got saved and become a college preacher, a, a preacher on the college campuses. I want to tell you, God can save him and pull him out of the pits of hell, whatever your darkness, whatever your distress, whatever your sin, whatever's got you bound, the Son of God wants to set you free. Oh, hallelujah. I said the Son of God wants to set you free if you'll just let him set you free. Oh, Woo. oh hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Listen to me. America, America's thirsty for God. America needs the God of the Bible. Did you hear me? I said America needs the God of the Bible. We don't need more gold. We don't need more sinful pleasures. We don't need more entertainment from Hollywood. We don't need the new Green Deal. I said we don't need the new Green Deal. But we got to ride bicycles. We can't even have cows. My God, what dumbness. I'm a, <laughs> listen. We don't need more ear tickling. Amen. People pleasing preachers. My God, give us some men that'll stand out and say, Thus saith the word of God, whether you like it or not. Amen. God said it, and that settles it. And you better ride up to it because judgment day is going to come. Somebody help this preacher. Preacher, are you praying for me? Hear this preacher. We don't need another three, three trillion dollar stimulus bill. further indebting our grandchildren. Take some folks, three trillion dollars is a whole lot of money. Are you here? Y'all gonna, gonna stay with me? I'm gonna preach. God's gonna help me. They told me would. We don't need Nancy Pelosi and 16 more Democrats. Amen. To try to find another way to impeach our president. Amen. You're welcome and God love you too. Amen. Brother, what we need in America is a revival of righteousness, a revival of godliness, a revival of holiness, a revival of prayer, a revival that will turn us back to the things that made us great. That was faith in God, faith in the Word. We went to church. The family that prayed together stayed together. Can somebody say amen? Throw your heart up fresh. You'd like to do something. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not done yet. Ooh, I'm just getting warmed up. Hallelujah. Hear the preacher? Listen to me. We don't need the myths, the myths of the Book of Mormon. We don't need the junk from the literature of the Jehovah's Witness. You're welcome. Hallelujah. Amen. We don't need the God of the Muslims. We don't need that God for sure. Woo! What America needs is some old-fashioned Holy Ghost, heaven-sent men of God that'll get the black back book. Oh, hallelujah! And tell you that heaven is high, hell is low. You gotta walk straight. You gotta live right. You gotta walk right. You gotta talk right, and you gotta spit right if you're gonna go to heaven. It's time to quit playing church. It's time to get down to business. It's time to find an altar. It's time to repent of our sins. It's time to repent and say, God, revive us again. Yes, Lord. Woo! Hallelujah. Oh, listen. We need some men that'll preach against sin. Listen to me. That will preach there is deliverance from alcohol and drug addiction. Yeah. We need some men that'll preach that there's deliverance from the drugs. We need a man to preach against the sexual perversion that's invaded our land. Huh? We need men to preach against the shacking up and the addiction to pornography. Amen. We need some preaching that will say God can heal broken lives and God can heal broken marriages and God can heal a broken nation. My God, we need some of that preaching and you're going to get some of it today if you stay long enough. Yes, Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. Said preached. Oh, praise God. Listen, it's time and past time that you let your children 
and your grandchildren know. I don't care what the school system says. I don't care the garbage they spread. Amen, there's no such thing. Amen, in God's word, as two mommies or two daddies. What a sick society. Can you say amen? I said, can you say amen? Woo! No! God made marriage between a man and a woman. Hello? Woo! Come on now. They are to be committed to God and to one another for life. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Woo! The Bible said in the last days there would be a fam famine, not for bread or for water, but of the hearing of the word of God. You might as well tell the truth and shame the devil. My God, you can go to most of churches in Frederick County. Amen, my God. If you heard any preaching against sin, it'd take the FBI to spike them out for about 10 or 15 years. Oh, yeah, they're prayer preach against maybe murdering somebody. But my God, you can do about anything else you want to. You can shack up. You can pack up. You can dress like a heart and look like a heart and live like a heart. Amen. Everybody's going to hell, brother. My God, who's going to go to hell? I'll tell you who's going to go to hell. Those who refuse to live right yeah. and get washed in the blood of the Son of the Most High God. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you it's a holy Bible. It's a holy heaven. Yeah. If you think you're going to go to heaven smoking cigarettes and spit tobacco juice on the streets of gold, you better wake up. If you think you're going to be pulling slot machines, hello, and live a life of devil on heaven, you better wake up. Heaven is high. Heaven is holy. Heaven is for the sanctified. Heaven is for the saved. My God, listen, brother, you better get ready now. Yeah. I said you better get ready now. You better get paid through now. You better get dressed up now. You better get your sin behind you now. You better get paid through now yeah. if you're going to go to heaven. There's a lot of people who think somehow. Well, I'll say, I did make it. No, friend, if you go to heaven, it will be with set purpose. You'll fight the devil. You'll fight hell. You'll fight your, your neighbors, and your family will turn against you. But it's worth the fight to make it to heaven. I've got to make it, and by God's grace, I'm going to make it. Can you say that? Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Got to preach a little more here to you. Come on. Listen to me. Oh, my God. America's thirsty. I'll be there thirsty for the truth. I'll be there thirsty for some men that'll preach the gospel. I think they're about sick and tired. Of its, you know, I, I, I think America's, America's sick and tired of this prosperity program. It's really funny. It's really funny. If you'll send them a $100... They'll send you a blessed snot rag. <laughs> Meanwhile, they're flying in jets and helicopters all over the nation. You're all cars have been ready to drop them. But if you just send them $100, they'll send you a pack of the seeds or a blessed snot rag or some other stupid something. Come on now. Right. My God, my God, if them wallets are so blessed, why don't they stick one in their own pocket and quit spending their time and wasting precious time? Amen. Trying to make another million dollars. Folks, I'm going to preach the gospel to you. I'm going to tell you, you'll have to live right. You'll have to get born again. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to take you to heaven if you'll listen to this preacher. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Listen, we have a barren land. You know why we've got a barren land in America? Psalm 63 and 1 said, Oh God, thou art my God. Early when I seek thee, my soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee. My, uh, in a dry and thirsty land where no water is to see thy power and glory. So, as I have seen thee in the sanctuary, I don't know about you folks, but I'm hungry for a move of God. I'm hungry to see God deliver us from barren altars. I'm hungry to hear somebody say, I got saved. Amen. I got saved, preacher. My life has been transformed. I went home and cleaned out my cupboards. I went home and threw the beer and the wine and the liquor. I threw my cigarettes in the dumpster. I got rid of my dogs. I got right with God, preacher. I got saved. I got born again. I changed my wardrobe. I changed my hairstyle. I got right with God, preacher. Somebody say hallelujah. Our land is barren of hope. 
Our land is barren of prayer. Are you listening to me? Our land is barren because the death of blood of 63 million babies have stained the blood of America. 63 million of their blood has stained the, the land and the, the land of America. Woo! Our land is barren because every year 88,000 people die of alcohol-related deaths, car accidents, and, and uh, alcohol poisoning, and so forth like that. Our, our land is barren because of the blood of almost 70,000 people in 2019 that died of drug overdose. Oh, is that sad? Or is that sad? Oh, God. Listen to me. Our land is bare because we're worshiping sports heroes. Our land is bare because the men of this country are hooked on pornography. Our land is bare because mama, amen, don't have time to pray. Amen, she don't have time to be a wife. Amen, she spends her time with the bingo parlors or down in Charlestown pulling the slots. Come on here. My God, it's time to get back to God. Woo! You know I'm preaching the truth. You know it is. Hallelujah. Our land is bare because we worship the harlots of Hollywood rather than the God of the Bible. Ah, come on here. Woo! Oh, Jesus. I'm going to tell you something here now. We don't need gun control. We need God control. Amen. Hello? Yes. Anybody got to say that? I said we don't need gun control. We need God control. Yes. Our problem's not guns in America. Our problem is sin. Our problem is a generation that's wild, running wild. Our problem is extreme Muslims that are trying to stamp out our, our people and kill and kill them. My God, that's a missing. We need a revival of the Bible, a revival of truth, a revival of the preaching of God's word. My yes. God, revive us again. Oh, Woo! Yes. Hey, preacher, that all you can preach? My God, what else do we need? Amen. When we get revived, I'll preach something else. But I'm telling you, brother, we've got to have revival before anything else can happen. We've got to have a revival. We've got to have a stirring. We've got to move back to God. We've got to move back to prayer. We've got to move back to the things that made us great. We need a revival. We've got to have a revival of righteous living in America one more time. And then he goes on to tell us. He tells us in that, uh, in that last part, he said, I will pour water upon that which is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. My God, how we need a flood. I said, how we need a flood of God's power. In 1906, there was a black preacher by the name of William Seymour and his wife, name was Jenny Moore. Brother Seymour got the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He felt, he felt that the holiness preachers would be thrilled to death he got the Holy Ghost. But when they found out he got the Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues, they locked the door to shut him out. He said, you're not bringing that crazy doctrine in this church. So he started visiting in the home of Richard and Ruth Asbury at 214 North Bonnie Gray Street. Within a week, the crowd got so great, they had to move to Azusa Street. <laughs> yeah, Two, four, uh, excuse me. They moved to 312 Azusa Street in an old abandoned warehouse. Hallelujah. And the revival just kept going. And for three years, revival fires burned. And from all over the United States and the world, they came in and got baptized in the Holy Ghost. They said a missionary came from the Philippines. And he came and he was going to set him straight. He was going to set the preacher straight. And let him know what was going on. And when he was asked, they was killing And when he got there, <laughs> when he got there, they got to praying for him. speaking in 
in the, uh, uh, he said a hostile Philippine tribe. The language of a hostile Philippine tribe. And his heart got touched. And while he was still praying, another little girl came up again to speak in other tongues and said, this is that spoken up by the prophet Joel. This is Pentecost. And the man that come to straighten it out got the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Let me tell you something. I don't need to be straightened out. What we need is more of God's power. We don't need to be straightened out. We don't need to live in holy. We don't need to abandon preaching holiness. My God, we don't need straightened out. We need more preaching and more revival in America to turn us around one more time. One more time. One more time. Let me tell you something. As far as I know, every major Pentecostal denomination can trace their roots back to that revival. They may not have been there, but someone came out of there, they can trace them to God, Church of God. And across the whole of the four square, amen, they all can trace their roots back there. Amen, back to that revival there in Azusa Street. Hallelujah. Oh my God. But isn't it sad? I said, isn't it sad that the fires that burned at Azusa Street, and I'm going to make it clear to you, they were just not the, uh, the fires of Pentecost. They were not just, not just the fires of speaking in tongues. They were the fires of holy living. Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah, some of you are going to fall out with you right now, but oh well, you'll have to fall back in, I guess. Let me tell you something. There was a day when you could go to any Pentecostal church in America. And every woman in that church would be wearing a skirt or a dress. You could go to any Pentecostal church in America, synagogue, church of God, whatever, you name it. You could go there and the women had long hair, which was their glory given to them by God. You could go to any Pentecostal church and they followed the teaching of Paul in 1 Timothy 4. Shame, face it, yes. Huh? Are you still here? But now, my God, you can't go to hardly any church anywhere where the women don't look like Jezebel reincarnated, have cowbells hanging from their ears. Are you still here? My God, their pants are so tight, they look like a bullfighter out of old Mexico. I'm going to tell you something, brother. I still believe in holiness. Hallelujah. I said, I still believe in holiness. My God, we've been captivated by the crowd of Hollywood. And I'm going to tell you, it's time to turn back. It's time to repent. It's time to get a backbone of a saw log and stand up and preach the gospel in the face of a wicked world and say, God said it, and let's live it. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Woo. God said, I want to pour out the water. He said, I don't want to just pour it out. He said, I want it to come out in floods. Hallelujah. I want it to come out in floods. And I'm going to close with this. Amen. We have a bountiful God. We have a, we have a thirsty people. We have a barren land. But we have a bountiful God. Amen. Woo! We have a God that wants to revive us. We have a God that wants to bless us. We have a God that wants to revive us. We have a God that wants to send revival to our churches. We've got a God that wants to save your children. Then if your grandchildren that are hooked on drugs, or your children that are hooked on drugs, we have a God that wants to set your daughter free from alcohol. Your son, are oh, you still here? I said we have a God that's bountiful. He wants to pull the water out. He wants to flood. Hallelujah. Lord. Listen. That little old woman in John chapter 4, she had an earthen pot. All I've got is this old blue bucket, but you can hold water in this. And that little woman came that day carrying a little pot, so to speak. She came there, trying to get a little water. Oh, ashamed of who she was. Ashamed of her past. Now then, woo, the master never, he never played around. He said, where's your husband? She said, I don't have any. He said, you've said, well, you've had five. The one you're with now is not your own. He never, he never patted around and said, oh, come on, little sweetie. You're just fine. Come as you are. Leave as you are. Let me tell you, there's only one way you can come, and that's like you are. But let don't bother me. I don't know how you're going to leave. If you've been touched, if you've been saved, you ought to be leaving a different day. Your life ought to be changed. Your attitude ought to be changed. Your best ought to be changed. Everything I'm not, you ought to change. Thank you.
just bucket back and it's going to run out, you're going to have to come back again. But he said, the water that I'm going to give you shall be in your well, springing up in an everlasting life. You know what she did? She dropped the bucket. Woo! And she went and she said, come meet a man that told me all ever I did. Somebody said, hallelujah. She said, come meet a man. Well, he called him a shut him up. Uh, come over here. I, I want to challenge you to come meet a man. I want to challenge you to come meet the master. I want to challenge you to come meet the savior. If you're tired of sin, if you're tired of your life, if you're tired of empty nights, I challenge you, my God, let's find the one that's got life, that's got water. Lord, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord. Anybody believe in the signs of preacher here? I got something, lady, that'll transform your life. Oh, hallelujah, I feel the Holy Ghost. I got something, lady, amen, that'll turn your life around. I got something, lady, woo, you can leave your water pot and leave here with a well. Come on here. You can leave your sorrows. You can leave your heartaches. You can leave your troubles. You can leave your sickness. My God, you can leave it right here and follow me. I've got life. I've got joy. I've got hope. I've got holiness. I've got the blessing of life. Does anybody want it? I said, does anybody want it? Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> 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 My mom tells about when her dad got saved up in Maine. Oh, cold, 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 cold. Milk. One of them old tin heaters trying to keep that old cold room warm. The preacher was preaching. My dad told my mom, he said, if you go up there to that altar, he said, I'm leaving. When that preacher gave that invitation, she said, I couldn't help it. She said, I had to get Before I knew it, I was at that altar. And she said, I wasn't praying very long. And all of a sudden, I heard Jerry, which is my dad. I heard him beside me. He was praying. And God saved him that night. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Are you glad you're saved? Are you glad you know the Master? Oh, Hallelujah. I'm not, I'm not forcing anybody to do this, but I wonder if anybody would just like to get outside your car and lift your hands up and say, God, revive me. God, I need your power. God, I need your presence. God, I need your hand. Does anybody? Want to worship God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father. For the word of God. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the way of God. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the salvation of God. Thank you for those who have a hunger to worship you. 
and magnify you, God. Oh, my soul, Lord. My soul is hungry for God. My soul is hungry for the living. As the heart panted after the water brooks, so my heart panted after me, oh God. I need revival. I need your water. I need your spirit. I need revival. Oh my God, revive us again. Thank you. 